Hello everybody and welcome back. This is uh, MTGO Legacy event number three. Uh, we are reviewing round two game three, Rock vs. Elves. This hand we are keeping. The reason we're keeping this hand is we have a first turn Bob and we're on the play. Having been pretty much shown our death, uh, what we've done is nothing post-board. There isn't much else to change. Our job is still just to slow them down. Kill every elf, which this hand doesn't have a single kill spell, but there's six one-drop removal spells, the four swords and the two dismembers. Uh, there are three three-drop removal spells, in addition to Jit and I believe I bought in the uh, Bear Fighter this one. Um, elves is all basics, except for the cradles, which I mean, if we take out a cradle, yay, he's going to have another one very soon. And to be honest with you, that's more of an additional mana source than an actual mana source. Uh, if we kill his elves, it's still, it's put back in its place. Um, that being said, we're keeping this hand because we have a first turn Bob, and the ability to draw two cards a turn typically means that we will find more and more threats. Uh, having the green sun zenith means that we can go get the bear fighter. Uh, Bear Fight is Uvenwald Tracker, also the name of a drink. If you haven't looked it up, look it up. And if you're legal and able to drink, try it out. I honestly don't think they taste very good. Uh, it's a combination thing, like a beer and chaser. You'll see. Um, moving on. Bear Fight means that we can start picking off elves for two mana. We have a two mana removal spell that is instant speed. Can live with that. Reusable removal is a very good thing. And comboed with Bob, who will be dealing us damage. I mean, honestly, Bob will be doing his job and killing us. But Bob will also be doing his other job, which is getting us removal spells at this point. So that's what we're relying on. We also want to thin our deck as much as possible. So it would be Mox Diamonds pitching Wasteland, play the flats, probably fetch out, um, probably planes, just for the simple fact that that way we can play the Knight of the Reliquary if we get enough land and need to be able to go that route. So... And seeing as it's elves, they don't have any wasteland, should be a non-basic that we get. I'm going to go ahead and pause it and move ahead to the first thing. Alright, here we are at our first thing, and it's actually a fetching. Um, for some strange reason, I'm, an, I'm a basics whore, I, I will be honest for you, honest with you. I love my basics, and that's that being said, it's a good thing in most matchups, but elves doesn't have wasteland. Uh... Therefore, we could have gotten any non-basic land, and it probably would have been better than that basic swamp. Um, also, a little bit of thought that I had. Between Bob and Top, <clears throat> I think that in this situation, Bob is probably the right choice, but there's an argument for Top. <clears throat> Excuse me, for Top. And the argument is that what we are looking for is removal spells. Top gives us access to be able to look and see if there's anything else. Uh, we get to look one card deeper than with Bob, and we also get to just kind of arrange to make sure that we get what we want. I mean, there's nothing worse than not having the tools that you need. Uh, that being said, Bob also gives us the ability to flip a land, or just get a land for next turn, which would also allow us to play top, look with top, and activate top. So that allows us to look five deeper. That's the choice that we had there. That's why we turn one Bob to... Uh, when I was doing the review, I actually marked that as misplay for some reason, and now that I'm awake, I see that that was not. And I say that now that I'm awake because, again, most of these reviews, when I'm actually watching the videos to kind of select out what times and everything I've I've got everything at, are done at between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So, I mean, there's a reason why they take a little while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and move ahead to the next thing here. Here we are at the uh, two minute mark and this is our next choice that we have to make. Uh, going over the Slotsies, I think I actually made a decent choice. I mean, the, there's this isn't anywhere near as bad as the last thing. He has the Cradle, so he has the mana. Because he's got the mana, we don't really, we aren't really too concerned with this. I mean, he needs more Elves in order to do it. We take an elf, then yes, he's just got what he's got in hand. I think that in this case, the actual choice, because all he's got at this point, if we just keep these these cards, is the ability to block us, which we have a Stoneforge Mystic, so that'll be nullified. But we have the we're getting ready to be able to look with top. So 
and we're going to be able to play a land. I mean, we can we can adjust as need be. If we don't like what our top sees, we can go Zenith for the Arbor just to get it out there. There are more options than what we had. So I think that taking the Fauna Shaman is the actual better play. I mean, all that we need to find with the top is a Pulse. And we have next turn, which if we don't see a Pulse, we'll be able to look two cards deeper the next turn and still have the mana. Because we're going to be able to play this land. He's going to play out probably both of these, if one or both. Uh, and hopefully both. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Hopefully play out both of them. That gives us access because this, I mean, this is protected. There's no reason for him not to play out this out. I've got to deal with this card before I can even touch this card. And if he plays this one out, I've got to deal with both of them. Uh, that being said, game one, he did not see Pulse. Game two, he did not see... Or wait, game one, he did see Pulse when I pulsed his, uh, uh, the Nettle Sentinels. So, I mean, keeping this in hand, justifiable. Keeping both of them in hand, I could see that. But it, it really creates an opening as far as things that I can do. I mean... I could go as far as to just hit this and then play the Mystic, and suddenly you have to play this. And that's not what he wants. So I think that the Fauna Shaman is the best choice. It takes away his card selection, giving him only mana, which could be absolutely terrible. I mean, next turn, we say he draws Visionary. So he plays both of these, drops the Cradle, produces four mana, plays the Visionary, draws a card, returns Visionary to hand, uh, if it's a crop rotation that's even worse, plays the Visionary, taps three, taps all three of his elves, has three more mana, returns the Visionary to his hand again, plays the Visionary, draws another card, crop rotates into a, a, the Cradle into another Cradle, which is ridiculous, and then starts going from there. I mean, yeah, he's drawing three cards on his turn, because on our turn, he'll just end of turn, return it to his hand, and he's netting mana off of it. Like, it's kind of hard to fight that. So, this is the best choice for us to take. Uh, unfortunately for us, we make the incorrect choice and freak out about the symbiote. Not realizing that we have so many different things. We get to look at six cards from our deck. We, or, not six cards. We get to look at three cards, and then if we don't like them, rearrange them. Like, that's huge. So... And on top of that, I mean, we could always find another piece of discard as well when we look. So, and that wouldn't hurt us at all. I mean, we hit this one, then we hit this one, and that takes away most of his mana. I mean, he's down to five mana, and we only have to deal with the, with these, with the two insects. And we take the insect just simply for the fact that there's already an insect in play. Or we leave the insect for the fact that there's already an insect in play. So, we make the wrong decision... We end up continuing on with wrong decisions. I mean, we could have reacted in a much much better way. Um, that being said, Jit is really good against them. I mean, if we get it online, we get it online. But because we made that decision, I believe that that ends up costing us the match. Also, that decision could have been made post-combat. That way we even know whether or not Bob is going to be living. I mean, who knows? If had he blocked something, I mean, he could have blocked return, which is great for us. I mean, the more mana that we can make him spend, the better. Granted, he's got a ton of mana already, so not as important. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here, and we'll be back. All right, here we are back again. This is the uh, about the five-minute mark, five minutes, six seconds in. I mean... I don't know how specific you guys want me to be with this. Uh, we have a choice here. We are we're planning to attack at this point, which arguably not the best choice. Our opponent did draw the other Fauna Shaman. I know we've progressed one turn, one turn in three minutes. Champion speeds here. Um, what we'd love to do is hit both of these and swing because we're we're going to attack attacking with Bob like getting him to hopefully trade off a nettle sentinel or a fauna shaman for it like Bob killing an elf is better off than Bob not killing an elf and the unfortunate thing is that we're in a position that we can't actually show um all right let me let me rephrase that because we left him with the fauna shaman 
he got to play it. Now he has two of them. Like, we'd still love to just be able to kill both of these. So, our best bet at this point would have been to swing, hope that he tries to, like, trade with the Nettle Sentinel and returns it to his hand, or tries to trade with the Fauna Shaman and returns it to his hand. If he doesn't, then he's got one Fauna Shaman in play, which limits his plays. We still pulse this, which means that he, he either has to put something up now, which gives him less than three elves, or he has to risk not drawing a creature, in which case we're still going to get to top and hopefully see another removal spell. Um, that being said, pulsing now and pulsing this just allows him to have more information for his block. And that's why it was incorrect. This was a case where should have pulsed post-combat. I mean, even having him put this back up means that next turn he can't go looking, or he can't activate it to search, because we do get to kill this. Uh, the unfortunate thing about it is that because he's got all of these out here, like, had he just had one of these, it would be fine. I mean, it's the fact that he gets to filter twice that's more of an issue. So, and he gets to return anything he wants to his hand as a defensive maneuver. Like, there's, it sucks. Uh, I do not agree with his choice in what he returns when I actually do go to do this pulse. And the reason I don't agree with that is because this is your mana. He returns the Heritage Druid. Um, granted, all of these are bigger, and, like, all of these can do something else, like, actually be a threat, whereas, like, him swinging for one is not a threat. Uh, the other thing that I fail to take into consideration is the fact that I'm at eight life. Swinging here, probably not the best idea. So, yeah. We just basically, we give our opponent all of the information that they could possibly want, and kind of go from there. I mean, not exactly where we want to be, not exactly what we want to be facing. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pause it there. That's pretty much the end of it for this one. And I will see you all next time.